Hello, my name is Jessica House, and I decided to do my literature project on Zikala Sa. Enjoy. Zikala Sa was born on the Yangtan Indian Reservation in South Dakota on February 22, 1876, and died January 26, 1938, in Washington, D.C. A member of the Yangtan Dakota Sioux, she was the daughter of a Yangtan Sioux mother and a Euro American father. She adopted the name Zitka Sa in her teens. She was raised by her mother after her father abandoned the family. When she was eight years old, Quaker missionaries visited the reservation, taking several of the children, including Zitka La Sa, to Wabash, Indiana, to attend White's Indiana Manual Labor Institute. Zitka La Sa left despite her mother's disapproval. At this residential school, she was given the name Gertrude Simmons. She attended the institute until 1887. She was conflicted about the experience and wrote both of her great joy in learning to read and write and to play the violin, as well as her deep grief and pain of losing her heritage by being forced to pray as a Quaker and cut her hair. She returned to live with her mother on the Yangtan Reservation 1887, but left only three years later. She felt that she did not fit in after her experience at the institution. At 15 years old, she returned to the institute to further her education. Her study of piano and violin led the institute to hire her as a music teacher. She graduated in 1895. When she received her diploma, Zitkala Sa gave a speech for women's rights. At age 19, against her family's wishes, she enrolled at Earlham College in Richmond, Indiana, and was offered a scholarship, also a Quaker school, and graduated in 1897. It was while at Earlham that she began to collect stories from native tribes. She translated the stories into Latin and English. In 1897, just six weeks before she was to graduate, Zikala Sa had to leave Earlham because of financial and health issues. Again, she chose not to return to the reservation. Instead, she moved to Boston where she studied violin at the New England Conservatory of Music. For two years, she taught at the Carlisle, Indiana Industry School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, but she was uncomfortable with the school's harsh discipline, which she had to teach Euro-American ways and history while teaching. She began writing autobiography stories, which were published in 1900 in the Atlantic Monthly Magazine. Zikala Sa's forthright criticism of the Indiana boarding school experience called, caused bad feelings between Zitkia Sa and her employer at Carlisle. At Earlham College, she had begun to discover her musical talents and she had performed as a violin soloist with the Carlisle, Indiana band at the Paris 1900s of the Exposition. In the 1900s, the school sent her back to the Yangtan Reservation to gather more students. She was shocked to find her family home in despair, the extensive poverty, and that white settlers were occupying land given to the Yangtan Dakota people by the federal government. She returned to Carlisle and began writing about Native American life. Her autobiography and stories presented her people as generous and loving instead of the common racist stereotypes that portrayed Native Americans as ignorant savages. Her writing, which was deeply criticized of the boarding school system, was published in the National English Magazine, including Atlantic Monthly and Harper's Monthly. In 1901, she wrote for Harper's Monthly a piece that described the profounded loss of identity felt by a student at the Carlisle, Indiana School. She was fired. She studied at the New England Conservatory during 1901. Moving to Boston put her in touch with an intellectual and artistic community that supported her career as a writer. Afterwards, she spent some time back at home on the reservation taking care of her mother and collecting stories for her book, Old Indian Legends. She also took work at the Bureau of Indian Affairs office at Standing Rock, Indiana Reservation as a clerk. She married Captain Raymond Tailface Bonin in 1902, who was half Euro-American and half Sioux. They were assigned to the Utah Ore Reservation in Utah, where they lived and worked for the next 14 years. She became a correspondent for the Society of the American Indians, the first reform organization to be administered entirely by Native Americans. While there, they had a son, Raymond Oya Bonin. 
Zikala Saw was one of the first Native American women to publish traditional stories derived from oral tribal legends. Her writing was full of imagery and emotion and frequently based on the white oppression of Native Americans. She was a writer and reformer who strove to expand opportunities for Native Americans and to safeguard their cultures. In 1916, she became the secretary of the Society of the American Indian and she and her husband moved to Washington, D.C., where she served as a liaison between the Society and the Bureau of Indian Affairs. She also edited the Society's American Indian Magazine under the name of Gertrude Bonin. She published several short stories and autobiography essays in the Atlantic Monthly and Harper's Monthly under her name Zikala Sa. The piece's themes derived from her struggle to retain her cultural identity amend pressure to adapt to the dominant American culture. In 1901, she published Old Indian Legends and retold Dakota stories. Until her death in 1938, Zikla Sa served as president, fundraiser, and speaker. Until her death on January 26, 1928, Zikla Sa continued to work for improvements in education, health care, and legal recognition of Na Native Americans as well as a preservation of Native American culture. She died in Washington, D.C. She is buried at Arlington National Cemetery with her husband.